Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to continue making practical things with 3D printing and Tinkercad. So today, what I'm going to do is make a base for an IP camera that I purchased. So we've gotten a couple puppies lately, and one of the things I want to do is keep an eye on them. So we've got put up these um, quote-unquote dog gates, and I want to be able to mount a IP camera, which I purchased on top of there. And these things are really cool. And so I want to be able to take it on and off though. And so what I decided is I'm going to design up something here in Tinkercad, print it out, and I'm going to show you guys how I do it in real time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this across and I'm just going to start with a basic circle. And I'm going to make this about 70 millimeters just to kind of uh, have my base sort of the way I want it because I want to. And if I get 70 here, that will be helpful. Now, I liked it and I have nice smooth sides. I'm going to kick that up. Now, this is at uh, 20. I'm going to knock this down to 10. And boom, I've got my base set up. Now, what I need to do is this will mount to the camera. I still need to put a hole in it. But I also need to have sort of a mounting bracket to sit on top of the gate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this out of the way. And I'm going to bring in um, a cube. And then so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this cube uh, 80 millimeters long. And um, well, actually I'm going to make this 90 millimeters long. And then I'm going to make this um, 26 wide. And then I'm going to make it uh, about 28 tall. Now with this, I'm going to now save myself some steps. I'm going to copy this and move this over here. Now. What I'm going to do is notice the 26. This is the width of my gate. Roughly, it's about 25 and a half, but I want to leave a little bit of wiggle room. So I want to put five millimeters on either side of room. So what I'm going to do is make this 36 now. Now the pieces, I'm not going to do too much more. And actually, I'm going to drop this one down to 26. Just to, uh, I'm going to actually make this sorry 27 and you'll see why. So I'm going to bring this back over here and I'm going to move this guy on top of here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move him up uh, so this is 10 so I'm going to move him up by uh, 9 because I want one, one millimeter of overlap so boom I'm up 9 and what I want to do is I want to now do my favorite tool not flip align if I get the right one here Trying to move through and see how quick I can do this. So everything looks pretty good there. Just looking at everything. So I'm going to go ahead and group these together. And boom, I've got my bracket. Oh, oh wait a minute. I don't have my bracket yet. That's not going to work. So let's turn this into a hole. And then let's lift this up um, by 10. Because I'm going to use the bottom material of the uh, circle or, or cylinder as my base and I'm going to kick this out to 100 just to make this grins and giggles and um, so this will leave five millimeters on either side so I'm going to again go ahead and use my favorite tool get everything aligned here I'm already aligned here and so let's go ahead and boom all right now we have our bracket well wait a minute yeah we, we got to put something here to hold hold it to the camera so now I've got all these nylon screws uh, with these big heads on them so what I'm going to do is use those and so to keep it kind of light and so I'm going to go with, it's uh, it has a third roughly a 12.5 millimeter uh, diameter head so I'm going to make these 13 just to give myself about a half millimeter of clearance now I'm going to drop this down the head itself is about eight millimeters tall so I'm going to make this uh, roughly about eight point to yeah 8.2 that sounds good I'm going to bring in another cylinder for the shaft the shaft is going to be um, about it, it's a quarter it's a quarter 20 bolt so I'm going to make it about seven millimeters just to give myself some clear pass through and so again seven millimeters and we're good there I'm going to bring up my sides uh, I don't care about computing power and, and I'd rather have it nice and smooth because I want it to look good I want it to look professional and so we're going to drop this in here. Now the pieces, I'm going to drop this down by 15. Whoops. you got to put a negative in front of it if you go down. There we go. So we're now down. So again, uh, I wish there was a way, and I wonder if there is a way where you just, 
you know, select something and just tell it to center in both dimensions and have it done rather than having to go through all that or some sort of macro. So now there's our bolt and or our bolt pass through. So now what I'm going to do here is um, take and you can kind of see how this is going to work because this is about the, about the amount of material I'm going to have left. So I'm going to kind of bring it up here and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to do 0.5 because remember I put a half and I'm going to give it just one bump up so that should roughly be a half a millimeter. I don't need a lot to cinch it down. Um, I want to just see real close. I don't think I've, yeah, about, about that. I'm pretty close. I'm going to come up one more bump because uh, I don't, whoops, that's not going up. So that's not going up. So I need to change this. So I'm down negative 13. So I now need to go negative 12 and 0.5 to bring that up. That makes me feel better. All right. Uh, I keep forgetting the up, to, up key doesn't make it go up. All right. So we're going to center all this nonsense. Get this done. I get that one centered. All right. So we now have the centered. Group that. We're done. But... Geez, oh, Pete, isn't this ugly looking? I'm not proud of this at all. So I'm going to I tell you what, I'm going to show you how to make this prettier. So we know that this base is 70, right? So I'm going to take another one, and I'm going to make this guy 120. And I'm going to make this 120. And not 12, Joe, 120. Get the zero. Sometimes Tinkercad doesn't respond as fast as my fingers go. All right, I'm going to make it this nice smooth side. And then I'm going to do control v C, V, and then I'm going to change this down to 70. I'm going to make this 70 by 70, and boom, I've got this. Now I want to make this, eh, grins and giggles, 40. I'm going to turn it into a hole, and then I'm going to, again, hit my favorite tool of a line. Bang, bang, and um, it should go to the center. Yep, all right, just takes a minute. For the old Amazon cloud to catch up and I'm going to pull this down just a little bit and highlight this and wham bam we have a donut now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this yeah, 50 I think that's tall enough and guess what I'm going to turn this into a hole and I think you probably see where I'm going so I'm now going to bring this into my model here, and then I'm going to again select this whole thing. Favorite tool, align, boom, boom. So everything is aligned in the center. And now what I'm going to do is highlight this, and there we go. Now, see how nice this is? Um, that did not get quote-unquote quote centered the way it should be. Something did not get centered about that. So I'm centered there. And I appear to be centered there. All right, let's try this again. Sometimes I get moving a little too fast for it. All right, that looks a little bit better. There we go. All right, so now this actually looks pretty good. Now notice this, this is tapered to match the the diameter of the disc below it and it, it uh, actually looks pretty professionally created now versus just you know even if we took it at 70 millimeters etc and you know had square edges on it again this is professional so it's one of the things you know kind of tips kind of think through this a little bit your base design and then how can you use other primitives to refine that design once you kind of get the mechanics where you want it so tell you what Let's head over. We're going to print this thing on the Delta printer. Then we're going to meet back at the bench, put it on the camera, and see if it works. So let's head to the time lapse.
welcome back. So we watched the 3D print of this on the Delta. Came out great. Now, unlike my computer mount that I did in a prior episode, this turned out just as I had hoped. So, as you can see, it fits on the bottom here nicely. Um, screw nice and recessed so it's flat. One of the reasons I did the thicker base was to sit it up a little bit and also to cover the thickness of this nylon screw. I wanted to use this nylon screw. I got a ton of them from some other projects and it was so it was just easy reuse. And again, this just sits on the uh, gate. And the nice part is I set it on there, I take it off. Set it on there, take it off. So when I go away, I just set it on there. And when I'm, you know, home and take away the gate, I just remove it. So it works out really nice. The PLA is really sturdy, works out well for this. And notice how nice this looks. This actually looks like it's part of this camera. So, uh, I mean, you can't even tell that this is really, a, you know, a 3D printed add-on. Anybody that comes over and looks at this will think you got it with the camera. And when they order theirs, they're going to be going, Hey, why didn't I get this with my camera? And you can tell them, because you created it. So, again, it just goes to show how easy it is to whip up something this quick, print it out, and have something useful. And... Um, Again, you can even make a business out of this. So there, I think there are tons of opportunities. Advertise it on Craigslist, uh, you know, in many local uh, publications that you do design works. You know, again, something like this, you can whip it up. And a lot of times what I found is once you create something, you can either create a hybrid of it rather quickly and sell, or you can sell multiples of them. So again, one of the things I want to do is, you know, encourage you guys to start home-based, cottage-based businesses with this. And to do this, you need to be able to design, print, and deliver product. So here you go. This is a good example. So with that, I hope you give it a big thumbs up. I'll have the link to this camera below. This about 60 bucks off of Amazon. These uh, actually aren't too bad for 60 bucks. They have the IR in them, um, so you can see at night. Uh, they respond rather well. And so, hey, I've been happy. Yeah, at least to watch puppy dogs with works well. Puppy dog camera. Anyways, swag shop up there. Subscribe button over there. Uh, let me know if you get any comment uh, down in the comments below if you get any ideas for something else for me to whip up because we're going to do more of this. Cheers. See you in the next video. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.